you guys uh, can hear me now thumbs up i can't see anyone but i suppose i'm doing this to myself so i was saying we get to decide what stresses us out or what doesn't stress us out and that's a concept that's very foreign to people they say oh no my parents talk to me in a certain way so i'm stressed oh my academics are so difficult for me to deal with therefore i'm stressed so a lot of us are giving these big fat labels to various activities and peoples and um the idea is that we are all stressed out for different reasons and that's why we are going to be i mean i was told that this would be a interactive session so i'm here to take your questions and uh, anything that you want to directly ask me related to your stress whatever it is i will answer it and of course i'll introduce concepts as we come along so definitely stress is uh omnipotent in many ways you may say it's uh, as common as love or guilt any other thing in our life that affects us uh, in this manner will visit us for a considerable period of time and stress is one of those things that will visit you at different stages of your life for a considerable period of time either you're stressed out about trying to make it either you're stressed out about how to impress other people either you're stressed out about your health about your family about your career about your academics We're all stressed out for different reasons, believe it or no. Even a guy who conducts stress management seminars like me may get stressed. But I firmly believe that we all get to choose what stretches us, stresses us out. It's a choice we make and that might seem like a very foreign concept. How can we choose it? Isn't it the situation that is stressing us or the person that is stressing us? Right? Isn't it these outside factors that are stressing us? No. it's not only the outside factors there's another factor as well and i would be happy to elaborate that with any questions that you have so i think uh, whoever is facilitating this i'd like to open the floor to any questions that you have about dealing with stress or what constitutes stress in your life anything relationship stress study stress and we'll take it from there so over to whoever is facilitating this floor is open <coughs> anyone want to ask question please unmute your mic and put the question also just Thank to you. clarify i'm not a physiotherapist i'm a psychotherapist yeah. I, so yes. if, if those of you all who want who have problems in your shoulders i'm the wrong person so no questions ki mera peet dukh raha hai no i can't help you with that i'm sorry so let's uh, get that out of the way any questions all questions there is no such question as a bad question or a dumb question in my book because in when i was in school i got told a lot of times i ask too many questions or i ask stupid questions my teachers weren't very fond of me because i was always asking questions and they never had the answers so i always enjoy getting interesting questions uh even if i don't have the answer i'll be honest about it so let's be let's keep this knowledge i like the i like that word that was used in the introduction knowledge transfer activity a two way process all right not just one sided like the last time If right. anyone don't want to unmute yourself, you can use your chat box so that uh, you can ask your queries to the server. Yes. If you don't want to unmute yourself, use the chat. Use sir, the chat. Sir, sir, audience is thinking probably. Uh, for the time being, can I ask you a question, sir? Sure. So they are stressed out about what to ask. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you see, every anything can potentially stressful. That's what you feel, right? Don't be worried. Yes. I don't have sharp teeth. Sir, so what is your general philosophy and approach to helping? And are you more directive or more guiding? In uh, in what approach? Uh, directive in relate in relation to? Uh, towards uh, your clients. depends on the client you see i'll tell you something people don't come to a psychotherapist just to faff around it costs them time it costs them money so if anyone comes to me to talk and they're stressed out uh i usually ask them what they want to achieve at the end of it if they just want to use the therapist as a vomiting bowl kare mere life mein kitna bura hua pata hai kitna bura hai my sister in law is such a horrible person my husband doesn't care see this one thing is aapki bhadas nikal jati hai aapka frustration nikal jata hai second is do you want to do something about it you would be surprised a lot of people don't want to do anything about it they just like to live in that little loop so i would be directive i would be more straight with them 
to help them maximize the most of their one hour with me. Because a lot, for a lot of people, even coming to a therapist is very stressful. It's like saying ki, I go to a gym because my bones are weak. No, you go to a gym to strengthen your core, to build muscle, to lose weight, to be in shape. Similarly, coming to a therapist is like going to an emotional or a mental gym. We help you revisit the various attitudes that you have developed. And how do we develop these attitudes? It's a result of what we have seen in our own houses. So if our parents have those attitudes, if their parents have those attitudes, if your chacha, chachi, mama, mommy, whoever came to have chai pe charcha, when you were growing up, have those attitudes, you will borrow it. You will borrow it and they will suddenly become your attitudes. So you are like a cheap knockoff of the previous generation. And then what happens is very often people will change their hairstyles, their clothes, their phone. People will change their friends, they'll change their houses, they'll put a new coat of paint. But people will seldom change their attitudes. And I believe very strongly that it is your attitude about life that might be a major contaminating factor in how stressed out you feel. So for a lot of people who talk to me, I live alone. I'm in Mumbai. I'm a grown man. I'm 34 years old. My parents are in Mumbai. They have their house. I have my house. They're like, how are you living for so many days alone during the coronavirus crisis? You haven't met your parents. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So you see, that constitutes a stressful situation for them. The way I see it, do I have food? Yes. Do I have an air conditioner so I don't sweat endlessly and feel go crazy in the heat? Yes. Do I know how to cook? Yes. Am I making some money at least? A little bit, yes. Enough to pay my bills and to buy bhaji. So I wonder what should I be stressed about if I have access to Wi-Fi? I start w wondering whether, <laughs> whether they are stressed that I'm not stressed. So you see, it's all about perspectives. For a lot of people, not being able to see their parents while being in the same city for three months would give them a heart attack. For me, I believe a heart attack will give me a heart attack. So it's about perspectives. I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question to ask. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, I am Mrs. Sujata Malik. I, have, I want to know those who struggle more are less feel less stressed in their life or you feel that those who are very very uh, in an environment very comfortable they be easily stressed out is this your view what is your view a comfortable, a comfortable environment is subjective a kid who has grown up being driven in bmws to his school who has a huge bedroom with a grand piano in it, with an 85-inch LED TV. And he's had that since the age of two <coughs> because his father has money. Are we saying he will never experience stress? No. His, what we call, frame of reference is different. He will still experience stress. He'll experience stress that his father couldn't buy him something when his father went on a business trip to Italy. In front of his house, there may be a slum where the son is worried about growing up to become someone who can afford to have pizzas once a month. Uska wohi goal hoga ki bada ho ke I want to make enough money for pizza. So, aapki jo reality hai, aapki jo reality hai, wo aapko pata hai. Aur usme aapko live karna hai. So, there's no such thing as if you have money, you're not stressed. Or if you don't have money, you're not stressed. Because you will operate from your reality. And your reality has nothing to do with Modi ji's reality or the coronavirus reality. Your reality is your little bubble, your thought bubble that you live in. All right. So that is my answer to you. That don't see stress as a universal concept. It's a very personal thing. Like if I ask, if I ask you, Sujata, what is your favorite color? Tell me what is your favorite color? I can't hear you. You're no. muted. Yellow, yellow. The color yellow makes you happy, it pleases you. For me, someone will say, I ask me, I say, I like the color red. Even my chair here, it looks like I have devil's ears. It's, it's, a red, it's a red color chair. Why? Because it's a color that pleases me. Why do I like it? I don't know. 
similarly a lot of people are not able to explain why they get stressed out but in therapy when they sit with someone like me we are able to find the exact reasons that are catalyzing the stress but as i said more importantly it's not those reasons it's not those reasons that are catalyzing the stress it is your attitude towards those reasons that is making it stressful for example when i was in boarding school uh we were ragged and this is not ragging like you know like in three idiots ki nach gana kar rahe hain there were a couple of kids who used to physically beat us up in violent ways mind you mere haathon pe bulb tode gaye hain you know actual bulbs and i have had to dig out the glass fragments from my arms as a 14 year old was that stressful for me at that time pretty much but what i did was i needed to escape the bullies because i was a short fat kid who didn't play football and cricket so for me uh the escape was to go and hide in the library so i had a stressful situation and i used that situation to find another location where i can engage in something that gives me relief do you understand so eventually because i read more because i was a lot more uh, curious about the arts and about music those faculties developed and then that also helped me professionally in a lot of ways it gave me a lot of credibility but before i was in the mental health profession i was a tv professional for a decade and there if you you understand, you understand music and the arts and you you're articulate and well read it helps a lot in your career it it also people will consider you more for leadership roles if you are reasonably articulate and know how to handle yourself verbally all right so i mean i hope that answers the question hello there are so many questions in the chat box i'm looking first question was yeah so first question was asked explain the relationship stress and how to deal with it relationship stress is something we all experience and a relationship doesn't just have to be a romantic relationship it doesn't just have to be you know love with valentines day all that stuff it has more to do with what your expectations are from that relationship and whether those expectations are being met and to what degree are they being met or are they being poorly met or not met at all that is what causes relationship stress for example if there's a girl she has an expectation from her boyfriend that he should message her good morning every morning on whatsapp and our friend here who is her boyfriend is extremely forgetful by nature and he was forgetful throughout his life before he met her at the age of 24 her expectation of the relationship is still he doesn't send me a good morning whatsapp message how do i know he's thinking about me and he says i think about her but i have other shit to do as well i'm not going to send formal good morning messages as if mere message karne se her morning is going to be good do hi ande khayegi na wo whether i message or no She'll have a little bit of milk, two eggs, maybe. If she's vegetarian, she'll have some upma. I don't need to message her. And for her, the benchmark that she sets is still I don't hear from him on a text message. I don't know his love is real. And then she starts suspecting him every time he goes to hang out with his friends, who may happen to be women. Acha, he doesn't want me. So I keep I say this in all my talks. I'll say it again. In psychology, we have a concept known as a confirmation bias. I know I repeat this a lot. If you've seen my other talks, and I repeat this because it's a very uh, simple concept to explain to people without getting too heavy. See, we have certain ideas in our mind that are dynamic. Now, who put those ideas in our mind is endlessly debatable. Or whether those ideas are original ideas that we have picked up along the way, along the road to life. So we have these ideas. Like, for example, this girl whose example I gave. If she has an idea that in her mind that she is unlovable, or that important people in her life will leave her, desert her, forget her, abandon her, sort of reject her completely as a person. if that is what she believes about herself her not getting a good morning message makes her feel that much more reject worthy why 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 because it confirms her beliefs about herself which are that she is anyway reject worthy even though that guy may have not messaged her her boyfriend may have not messaged her because he messages no one wo apni maa ko phone nahi karta wo tumko kya good morning bhejega that could be his reality but in her mind she has imagined a completely different picture wo koi movie ka third act chalu ho gaya hai uske dimag mein she has created heroes and villains and side characters at the end we are all playing out movies in our minds in that movie we are the central character 
I remember I used to read this Calvin and Hobbes comic and there was a, uh, this, this panel where Calvin looks up at the stars and he says, you know, you just look up at the stars in the universe, you realize how insignificant we are. How, how minuscule we are compared to the entire scheme of the universe. Is there a God who's looking out for us? We don't know. Unless he came and said hi, we wouldn't know if he's there. I mean, to each his own. Uh, is there a law of the universe? What are we exactly doing with our time? So that is a question for the ages, right? So what is relationship stress? A mismatch of expectations. That's what it is. A mismatch of communication, mismatch of expectations, and a mismanagement of the way in which you all relate with each other. If you all are together as friends, as a family, or even as a boyfriend, girlfriend, or even as a boyfriend and boyfriend, if you all are together, but your constant mission with each other is to punish each other, teach each other, change each other, then kya na ego pe chota jati hai logo ke. And then no one wants to deal with that beyond the point. It becomes tiring and boring. Someone is saying Google it. You will find yeah. a better There's another question. Hello, There's another question. How to overcome news reading and get disturbed by it habit? How to overcome news reading and get disturbed by it habit? How to overcome news reading? It's not a. Uh, it's it's not something you I need to overcome. So it's something that, you need to control. Yeah. Like personally, I get my highlights from a couple of. I watch the BBC, CNN. Mere ko aata hai. Instagram pe main follow karta hu. Twitter pe. I I don't have a Twitter account, but I I I I'll Google important tweets from these news channels. So I get the basic updates. And WhatsApp to hey people will keep sending articles there. If I find something interesting, I'll read it. But see, if I give you dengue and malaria statistics constantly for three months and lock you in your house and only give you dengue and malaria statistics, I guarantee you the next time you see a, a, a rat or you see a mosquito, you will feel as scared as you do while hearing coronavirus news. If you're constantly getting bombarded on your senses, this is a red zone, this ward, I bet you didn't know what municipal ward you live in till the coronavirus happened. I live in the F ward. All right. So anything you consume uh, beyond a certain limit and who's going to prescribe these limits, you have to decide how much you can take. Like, as I said, I'll give another gym example. Some people can lift 5 kilos, some people can lift 25 kilos. But it really depends on how much their body is primed to take. You have to condition your body. Similarly, your mind may not be conditioned for stress. You may have lived a largely protected life where people have done things for you. Your family has lard or pyar se aapko bada kiya hai. And now you pay the price for not being self-sufficient or not, you know, being uh, proactive in your wellness. I believe everyone has a responsibility to be proactive in their own wellness. No one's going to, uh, you know, fairy godmother is not going to come wave a magic wand and make all your problems disappear. It will never happen. The nature of your problems will be different for different ages. If you're a 15-year-old, or if you're a 20 year old, your problems are very different. If you're a 76 year old, your problems are very different. If you're 34 like me, your problems are very different. If I think about all the things that I used to consider as problems when I was 21, 22, I would find them ridiculous and funny and frivolous. Ki ye kya cheez hui? I remember when I was in college, there used to be this Chinese restaurant where we used to eat fried rice for 50 rupees and they raised the price to 65 rupees one day suddenly. And we stopped going there because of that. Because that 15 rupee was something that worried us so much. Their portions are just the same. Because back then, money went a lot further. Because pocket money. Tha. Now, if someone says 10, 15 rupees, I may not even think twice. I'll be like, okay, if it's the change, it's a tip, whatever. But you see how perspectives change over time. Not just for money, but for what in what induces stress in you may also mutate. Some things, as I said, with practice, you can definitely figure out how to uh, uh, how how to sort of be calm through even a crisis. All right, let's move to the next question. I think. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask. Hello, Hello, doctor. Doctor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, my question is what is the best way to keep the mind cool and calm? Uh, there are several ways. In my opinion, there is no such thing as a best way. So what I usually, I don't like to recommend things to people that I haven't myself tried. Otherwise, it becomes very vacant. It just becomes Gyan Bhatna. 
so for me when i'm stressed out a few things really help me uh, so i i can share those if you'd like all right so i um, yeah so let me share those so for me uh, music is a very uh, instant stress relief for me i have an app called spotify and i show you i don't work for them but it's a great app and it i i have these playlists based on various moods uh so i find a good playlist that i like what i do is i keep my phone my beloved iphone in a completely different room i put it for charging and i put it on silent mode so i assume no one's going to try to reach me at that time and i keep my phone away because i don't want to be bombarded with messages and news if it's super urgent i'll get a missed call because people will find you not replying to your message and i'll call them back zyada se zyada they won't be able to reach me for one hour that's a lot of so for me keeping my phone away listening to music i also go down for a jog and brisk walk i try to go once a day some days you feel a little lazy so i'll say chal aaj mujhe mann nahi kar raha i'll go for 20 minutes and then once you are down and you're feeling great you're like to hell with it let me pull through for another 20 minutes and then next thing you know you have walked for 45 minutes which is um, extremely good because those also release endorphins you know and also getting some nice fresh air fresh breeze just looking at people just feeling the vibrancy of uh, a location any location you don't have to be at some exotic location uh, that's quite nice you know if you have an, even a cheap pair of headphones or earphones uh, you can listen to music i also listen to a lot of podcasts uh, which i feel not enough people do in india there are a lot of great podcasts so it's like this if you go for a 15 minute walk 15 minutes and a lot of podcasts have episodes that are anything ranging between 8 minutes to 20 minutes you you say i'm going to walk as long as this episode is going on and in just one walk you have left your house but you have come back to your same house as a slightly smarter slightly more interesting and slightly more slightly more enlightened person it's not like you're the buddha or you're going to shoot fireballs from your hands there's no such thing as overnight results in psychotherapy or in life but it's inch by inch you got to take those baby steps so as i said um um definitely music definitely walking um another great activity to do if you're really stressed uh is to talk to a friend of yours now this is now pay attention to what i'm saying talk to a friend who you know after speaking to your mood will be a lot more uplifted speak to such a friend who is good for your mood if that friend is someone who's going to bitch about the government are modi ne kuch nahi kiya are pm cares fund ka paisa aap sab wo apne jeb mein ambani ko diya hai malum hai kya if you're going to talk to one of those friends then you're going to feel a lot more shittier than you did before you made that call so there are certain friends who just uplift you they're really optimistic they're really out there they're very helpful they really care and if you don't have a single friend who's like that maybe the question you need to ask yourself is where are you making all these friends and maybe you need to start focusing on the types of people who you let inside your life see people can come inside our lives and leave like guests but your friends are like permanent house guests in your mind and in your heart okay so you really want to be careful with who you surround yourself with some people live in houses where the parents and grandparents are very negative and then they keep going to those grandparents and parents for life advice and they also become very negative so this whole myth that just cause someone is older to you they have figured out life is the greatest lie that has been told to all of us ki tumse bade hain unko zyada acha maloom hai it's not a universal law I believe a man or a woman is only as good as their track record has proven. However, having said that, they are also full of endless potential. So just because someone has a really bad track record doesn't mean that they will continue to fail because sometimes people just bounce out of it. Sometimes people just wake up one day and they know what they want. They know what they don't want and they have that razor focus clarity or they have a good mentor. So another tip I would give to you as i said first connect with a friend who uplifts you is find a good mentor someone who mentors you after speaking to like i have a lot of people i mentor they come to me for consultations uh we have one hour sessions and i always give them some homework i always give them some activities so it's not just one sided gyan and that helps you know because a mentor will uh, be invested in your journey and will create bespoke solutions to help you along that journey so asking for help is a very very important thing 
uh, I've asked for help at many stages in my life. I spoke about, uh, you know, the ragging uh, when I was in school. So during that phase, I went and asked a teacher for help. And uh, she did something a little off left field. She made me a part of the editorial team of the school newspaper. Because the bullying used to take place between 10.30 at night to 12.30 mostly. The library hours were obviously shut at that time. But there used to be an afternoon session also where the ragging would take place. So I had identified that if I escape the bullies in the afternoon by sitting in the library with my books, I'm safe. But what do I do at night? Night we have to return to our dormitories. I was in a boarding school, so dormitory ko jana padta tha. Cut off time hota tha. So I asked this teacher for help. She said, "You, if you join the school newspaper, I will get special permission for you to stay and work on it in the computer lab. And back then, computers were not very common. This is late 90s, early 2000s. Not everyone. So computer lab was like a mecca for us. Like we loved going there because we were all new to the concept of computer. A lot of you kids may not even know what that era felt like. You were probably born after 9-11 also took place. But for us, that was an amazing thing. It was like Disneyland. So not only did I get my typing speed went up. I used to type like this with two hands. I learned how to type with all my fingers. I used to read so my writing improved. I learned a lot of softwares that no other kids knew. And I became a part of the editorial team. So I understood how to manage deadlines and responsibilities, which is a very useful skill uh, as I got into my college career. So you see, just because I asked for help, so many nice things happened. So don't be afraid to ask for help. All right. Ask for help and then do what you feel is creating that balance in your life. You don't have anything to be afraid of. So yes, that is my answer. Which is the next question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for the nice answering, answering this question. question. Uh, sir, uh, there, there is a question in the chat box. box. Uh, Poonam Sharma has asked, uh, uh, is asking uh, that, that can you tell uh, um, how, how to cope up with the fear? fear? How do you overcome our fear? fear? I think fear is something every human being experiences so first first way to really overcome it is to stop uh, chastising yourself for having it so don't blame yourself for being afraid everyone is afraid of something or the other so there's nothing to be ashamed of that how can i be afraid people are afraid of the dark people are afraid of spiders lizards rats people are afraid of the coronavirus some people are afraid of their parents some people are afraid of arranged marriages Maybe you all are too young. In a few years from now, you'll experience that fear or not. So fear is universal. And to be honest, to overcome it permanently and you've become some kind of daredevil and you're jumping from rooftops, that's never going to happen. Fear is important because it makes you human. So you don't have to overcome your fear. You have to accept your fear. Having said that, if you are tired of being afraid, then you need to act in a manner that counters it. For example, I got tired of being afraid of the dark. So I started deliberately subjecting myself as a kid to situations where I deliberately have to walk through the dark. So as I, the same incident I told you, when I used to walk back to my dormitory, we lived on a hill. It used to be very dark when I walked back from the computer lab. And you know, some of these flickering lights, etc. give a very Ramsey Brothers horror movie vibe. So I used to get very scared. But I said, you know what? Either I sit in the dormitory where there are a lot of lights and get bullied, or I suck it up, sit in the computer lab, reach late to the dormitory, avoid the bullies who have gone off to sleep, and walk through this dark path. So for me, overcoming it was not really an option because I knew I have to choose between two choices. Always in life, there will be choices that you have to make. So you have a choice. Do I want to continue to be afraid? If the answer is yes, then by all means, no force in the universe, not even the greatest priest or hypnotherapist or uh, psychotherapist or physiotherapist or any therapist will be able to help you deal with it. But if you say, hey, you know what, I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of living this life. So then in psychotherapy, there is one approach, it's known as the flooding approach. Under the supervision of someone. So for example, some people are afraid of being judged. So they have this problem of social awkwardness. If we go there, they'll say, kaun aagya, kaun hai? We don't want this person. Isko bhaga do. Boring hai. Stupid hai. Iske kapde dekho. Isko to English bhi nahi aati. People will judge us. 
Okay, for various reasons. If that is what you are afraid of, then under supervision of a therapist, he may subject you to a situation where you have to go and speak to five strangers. I had a client who was suffering with a uh, fear of strangers and social anxiety. So I put him on a project and I, I called it Project Train. We actually called it Project Train. He used to take the train every day. Uh, and I said that every day on your commute, you will talk to at least one person in your compartment instead of playing with your phone. And you will talk about very mundane things. You will talk about the weather. You talk about Modi. Modi ji This simple line, Modi ji No need to say. You will get 100 different answers from 100 different people and they will be happy to give you an opinion. Some people will say, Modi is like this. Are Modi ji hai to sab hope hai India ke liye. So, people also love to be heard. He realized this. He came and told me in his third session and I used to tell him every time you meet a person, you go home and write a little bit about that, how that exchange was and what you learned from that person. So, he first person he met, he realized that others are also as scared as me to talk to strangers. And when you go and talk to them first, they feel a sense of relief. Then the second person was not interested in speaking. So he said, see, the second person didn't speak. But then I told him that that could have happened even with the first person. So you will always have some people in this world who don't want anything to do with you even without getting to know you. Someone has unmuted. Alright. Gurjinder, I think it was. Everyone's at home. I hope everyone's fine. Heard some kids in the background. So yes, hope your kids are well, Gurjinder. So the idea is very straightforward. You have to find newer ways to expand your comfort zones. Because as your comfort zones get expanded, the things you're afraid of will reduce. So in effect, you have not really overcome your fear. You have understood and accepted your fear and you have found a way to grow beyond it. So growth is beautiful. When you say overcome, overcome has a, in my opinion, is a, is a slightly stronger word. I have to overcome the enemy. I have to overcome obesity. I have to overcome. No, you don't have to overcome anything. You have to understand it. You have to accept it. And you have to mature in a way that you grow beyond it. Go beyond it. That is my my few thoughts on how to deal with fear. If you have fear, you're human. If you don't have fear, you are the Terminator. Okay. So, sir, I have a question for you. Yeah. yeah. Sir, don't you think so? The stress, the term we have exaggerated the most. Like nowadays, like according to me, stress uh, is a thing. Like, who gives us the means to do something. Or in a particular amount of stress, it enhances our strength. Don't you think so? What's your take on that? See, it's one thing to be stressed and one thing to be concerned. Like, if I suddenly realize that there is not enough money in my bank account, if I get stressed, I'd say, Bapre, paisa khatam, Bapre, economy kharab, Bapre, ab kya hoga, Bapre, Bapre, is stress. Concern is that, all right, this is a really crappy situation to be in. I could use more money and I need to figure out a way to make sure those bank books look really nice and healthy. And you know, it's not in the four digits, but it reaches the six, dig six digits and I have a little more money to play around so I can invest it, so I can grow it. Maybe get health insurance, maybe put it in the market if I feel like I know what I'm doing. So you see, stress is usually a form of self-induced punishment. Stress is based on the attitude you have. So a lot of people f feel stress because they feel like they are special and for some reasons unknown to mankind, they should be spared pain. I am special. I should be spared pain. I should be spared discomfort. It's awful if something happens in my life that makes me uncomfortable. I demand that I always be comfortable. If I'm uncomfortable, it's horrible, it's terrible, it's untenable, it's unbearable. It's the end of the world, it's a doomsday. You are stressing me. You, it's you, it's your face, it's your words, it's your expectations, it's your house, it's your clothes, it's your gender. It's your socioeconomic status, it's the size of your car that is stressing me out. So you see, every time, fingers are pointing outwards. All fingers are pointing outwards and therefore it becomes stress. It becomes concern when you take ownership. And in life, 
you will feel you find many situations where you have not prepared for those situations and jitna bhi aap prepare karo aisa hua hai kabhi kisi ke sath ki you prepare for a certain exam and then one or two questions come which you are not prepared for and you you say shit ye chapter mere se reh gaya tha ye yahi cheez main samjhani and now it has come to bite me so we can't avoid the situations either you can spend your entire lifetime wishing that there is no such thing as stress on this planet and then die a very disappointed fragile disillusioned old man or woman because th- there's no such thing stress to yaar buddha jesus mahatma gandhi subhash chandra bose ko bhi hua tha to fir aapko kyun nahi hoga aap kahan ke special ho gaye ambani has stress vijay malya has stress the tatas what kind of stress they must have gone through when the taj was attacked during 2611 stress ko nahi hai stress aap bataiye mujhe so everyone has stress so take comfort in the fact that everybody is stressed at the level at which they are um, living or working level doesn't mean high or low level level means age also so some people like you are saying stress is necessary i don't think it's necessary i think you can be concerned you can uh, sometimes people get worried but when worry goes on overdrive see i'll give you an example agar aapke paas bahut mehenge speakers hain bluetooth speakers sabse mehenge wale boss jbl ke speakers hain yamaha ke hain aur aapko us pe music sunna hai aap acche se acche speaker ko agar volume 100 karoge to aawaz phategi music ki aur shayad wo speaker bhi kharab ho jayenge that is stress 7.1 channel ki baat ho rahi hai 5.1 in my house, Siddharth Nagar. 5.1 ko bhi aap full volume pe sunoge, it's not good for the health of your speakers. But if you hear it at a little more than halfway point, you hit that, hit that sweet spot. So in life, if you are stressed out, it's like listening to music at 100%. Even if the speakers are good. If you are concerned, then and you're feeling a sense of ownership about the problem, that I need to handle this i need to handle it because no one else is going to do it no one else is going to do it see don't forget most places even a college is a business at the end of the day the college's job is to give you information the college's job is not to make sure you're a successful individual when you become 37 or 48 years old they have said bhai we gave you the education we gave you the knowledge we gave you the degree we gave you the credit points we gave you the certificate we gave you the exam we gave you the credibility but if you still go out there become a drunk or waste all your money and gamble your time away then you can't blame the college can you so at the end we have to make decisions on a daily basis we have to make decisions on a daily basis on what we do with our time time is the only currency we really have and it's a non renewable currency you don't get to be this age again this is the only time you will be able to be it at 21 22 20 whatever age you guys are at maybe younger so that is something you need to remember that is something you should remember that you have a job to do and your job is to survive but how do you want to survive do you want to survive feeling like you're constantly being victimized by the world or do you want to survive by being a negotiator or by being a uh, collaborator by being someone who just uses the opportunity to learn so i always tell people that as much as i am a teacher by title i'm also a learner i like to learn also from my students like i remember when we all st- because the entire teaching community has moved to video conferencing because of the covid situation uh, at the beginning when people used to get unmuted suddenly unmute ho jate the because i was not used to it because when i teach a classroom or when i speak to a large audience I'm not used to people talking. In the beginning it used to uh, confuse me a little bit, throw me off. But then I realized that every time someone unmutes, it's like a nice break for the people who are sitting also and we'll take we'll crack some jokes or something about it. Like uh, and you know we'll take a, like a 20 second diversion and then come back to the topic. And then I said these unmutings are also good for me because it sh- it tests my temperament as a speaker. Like some speakers get very why are they getting unmuted? But I have to stay cool, stay on course and stay true to my subject. Imagine if I only started getting stressed out while talking to you guys about stress because someone unmuted. See people get stressed out for all kinds of things. There is no uh, list. 
uh, that oh i will only get stressed out about these 10 things in your life there may be certain things you never knew could stress you out but you reached a certain age and suddenly it has come and despite your sincerest efforts and despite your family background you are now stressed out you are now frustrated and that's kind of like how life is you know sometimes you got to swing in the dark most times you'll have to swing in the dark so make sure you work on your swing uh, so that's how it is you have to have some faith in yourself which i feel a lot of people don't have faith in themselves because they have been systematically taught to only have faith in their elders or only have faith in their books or only have faith in a certain spiritual leader or only have faith in a certain government body or only have faith in a certain group of foods the idea is you come alone you die alone when you're going to die we don't know so have faith in yourself and if you don't have faith in yourself then earn respect in your eyes by doing things that make you feel respectful towards yourself if you can't respect yourself safe to say no one else will be able to respect you if you are not a happy person you cannot teach others to be happy if you are not able to deal with your stress better than other people then you have no right to tell people that they should not be stressed out so this is what the old adage goes practice what you preach and as i said earlier also don't think you're special you are not special you will not be spared the stresses of life so i remember when the introduction was taking place you guys are so sweet and kind someone referred to me as an eminent personality i'm not an eminent personality i'm just a man i am flesh and bones just like you have i read more books than a lot of you all yes without a doubt why because i've had more time i'm older so i've had more time so i use that time to read to understand myself better to understand the world better do i know my subject yes i do because i've invested the time in it automatic i wasn't born 34 years old i was 20 as well i've made some dumb decisions as well i told you how we used to worry about even 15 rup- rupees ka price jump that used to be stressful for us but don't i don't judge myself for that i find it funny because if i had not gone through that would i be sitting here today explaining it to you all in this manner so don't judge yourselves about being stressed out a lot of people will say are isme koi stress hone wali baat hai kya tumhare baap ne tumko kitna kuch diya hai ignore them if you are worried if you are stressed out there are solutions so seek out help curate your friends listen to music some physical activity is extremely essential and most importantly find things to do that you love and those things need not earn you money some people love to bake they love to itna bake karenge we have whatsapp groups in our building cake pe cake bana rahe kaun kha raha hai samajh mein nahi aata itne brownie cake bana diye some people are even making money out of it good for them in this economy anything that makes you money is good so you know really ask yourself what you're passionate about if you say i have no passion my passion is to work fine work is work but a passion is something that is like that creative khujli that you have ki ye karna hai yaar i want to paint i want to do this then do it if you don't know how to do it take a course take a course you don't have money for a course go to youtube on youtube you could either watch either watch videos of dogs getting afraid of loud sounds or you can watch a ted talk or you can watch how to improve yourself in that department i have a, a friend who wanted to learn photography pura youtube pe seekha hai usne photography he didn't do a single photography course and now he's a professional food photographer who makes a lot of money for his photography skills he learned on youtube youtube to free hai hai ki nahi if your sadat wants to explore the whole world sadat i also wanted to explore the whole world so what i did i've been to many countries cambodia vietnam japan taiwan सिंगापुर में तो आया रह रहा था मैं मलेशिया इंडोनेशिया ग्रीस टर्की आई बिन हियर स्पेन फ्रांस हाउ आई फिगर आउट आउट टू गो टू गूगल अर्थ वेरी स्मार्ट इज फैंटेस्टिक समवन सक्सेस विद गूगल यू हैव लाइक अ गूगल इन्फिल्ट्रेटर इन आर मिड्स ऑल राइट सो हाउ डिड आई मैनेज टू एक्सप्लोर द वर्ल्ड बाय फिगरिंग आउट हाउ टू मेक इनफ मनी टू सपोर्ट माय गोल ऑफ एक्सप्लोरिंग द वर्ल्ड सो आई फाउंड अ जॉब दैट मेड मी इनफ मनी I saved some of that money I had to spend on my home loan, the house in which I'm living, the one you can see in the background. I bought this house with my money, hard-earned money. But I knew that money I can't touch because वो तो जाता है EMIs whatever. I said थोड़ा पैसा मेरे को जाना है. So I used to go and live at the 
most horrible possible accommodation whenever I went to these countries, like a hostel. Horrible in the sense like it's not a very fancy hotel room. But it's enough. There's a there's a bed, there's a pillow, it's hygienic, there are no bed bugs, there's no dusty. And in developed countries, when you travel, even a hostel, something like ten, twelve dollars a night ka bed hota hai. Earphones laga ke so jao. Wake up early. Or I would try to sleep in train rides. Uh, you know, if I take bullet trains in Japan, wohi pe ja ke so jao. So I don't have to spend on an extra night at a hotel. So I cut costs ki ghumna hai. Luxury me ghumna hai ye ni bola tha. Jo cheese pasand hai, wo to karni hai. So you have to figure out, uh, sequence by sequence, you have to figure out how to, uh, how to support your dreams. Don't expect your father to fund your world travel. Too bad. He's not going to, because you're going to, uh, it's not going to appeal to some people in that generation. Sometimes they may not understand, so if you have dreams, you got to learn to fight for it. You got to earn the right for it. And you got to make enough money and find the resources. Sometimes it's not even about money. It's about connections. You have to make the right connections. Uh, because these connections will help open certain doors to you. And uh, once those doors open, you walk through those doors and you discover some beautiful things about yourself, about the world, about your dreams. And I believe everyone deserves a shot at that. You deserve a shot at least. Um, otherwise, you grow up into a resentful, bitter old person. And I have many clients who are in the late 70s and they've... मैंने अपने बाप को खुश करने की कोशिश की लेकिन ही नेवर्स नेवर हैप्पी मैंने अपनी माँ के लिए इतना किया बट शी वाज ऑलवेज डिप्रेस्ड सी आई डोंट से डोंट सर्व योर फैमिलीज लव देम टेक केयर ऑफ देम बट डोंट ओनली लिव फॉर देम एंड फॉरगेट टू लिव फॉर योर सेल्फ दैट इज अ प्रॉब्लम दैट इज अज प्रॉब्लम ओके लिव ऑफ लिव फॉर योर सेल्फ यार तुम्हारी भी लाइफ है तुम्हारा हक तो बनता है ऐसी क्या बात है सो यार लेट्स सी एनी मोर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू पूनम थैंक यू तना जी ताना जी बोला तो दैट म्यूजिक प्लेट फ्रॉम द ताना जी मूवी सॉन्ग इज स्टक इन माई हेड सिंस आई सो इट माइट हैव बिन द लास्ट मूवी आई सो इन दिएटर्स बिफोर द लॉकडाउन क्या करेंगे सब फंसे हैं घर पे स्ट्रेस हो रहे हैं सब फैंटेस्टिक यार वॉट आर द क्वेश्चन डू वी हैव सिद्धार्थ इज आस्किंग सोनी नॉट सोनी सिद्धार्थ यू फाइंड मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम लेटर That's my Instagram guys in the chat. You want to ask me all these other things you can ask there. Let's be cognizant of the time here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sir, sir, I have a question. Rohit this night. Bolo Rohit. Uh, sir, now you might have heard the news about Shant Singh Rajput. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. He committed suicide due to stress. So uh, I was the one who like adored him uh, for his movies, the Chori movie which he did. And he like he gave a message to not to suicide for any stress. But he did it. I myself was stressed out uh, after hearing this news. Even nowadays, it the posts and everything comes on uh, social networking sites and everywhere. Right. So, uh, what do you think? What is your say on this? See, our Sushant. In fact, Sushant and I are born in the same year, 1986, and he is just one month elder to me. I'm 9th March, and he's a February baby. And it hit me also because we are exactly the same age. And uh, of course, you know what? Uh, what what disturbs people the most is you know someone who is seemingly good-looking, seemingly successful, seemingly professionally sorted, seemingly working with some of the most beautiful women, perhaps in the industry, uh, getting accolades, getting awards. If he can suffer and languish and decide to pull the plug on his life, then what makes us so special? So. Correct. A lot of things. Uh, Sushant's relationship with his mother has been explored as well. That he was really missing her. It's there on his Insta profile as well. A lot of things. So, what? And this is my hypothesis. I could be completely wrong because I don't know the guy. I feel Sushant uh, was maybe temperamentally uh, finding himself lost. because in bollywood there are two lives you have to live the life that you live personally which no one really knows about and the life that you advertise on twitter on insta on social media in interviews so i feel there was a discrepancy there and uh, there are a lot of uh, questions being asked about whether he was boycotted or whether he was not boycotted and you see um, he was i believe he was on depression medication and depression can occur when there are certain biochemical fluctuations in your body as well but depression can also be uh, catalyzed by your belief systems 
So as I said, you can live your entire life trying to avoid pain, which will not be possible because it's not happened before. You may be the first person who avoids it or your second, or you can live your life trying to find meaning in that pain. Like I find meaning in all that pain. I found meaning in being bullied. It got me the library and the school newspaper uh, connection. I find meaning in even all the girls I've dated when I was in my 20s because they taught me so much about myself. Uh, certain things about myself that needed to be changed and then once after I changed them professionally also so many things happened for me which I never expected I never expected and they were good things I was very happy so I was, thank God I made those mistakes when I was in my 20s so you see with Sushant what has really happened is uh, we don't know enough about his personal life but I think he may have been spread out very thin as well because he had many interests right he was interested in um, I think astrophysics and uh, you know astronomy and um, uh, all kinds of stuff quantum physics he was interested in so perhaps he got spread out thin also uh, the fact that not every person takes rejection very well we know he was brought up uh, with two sisters we also know that uh, he was a uh, introvert and he used acting perhaps as a way to find acceptance for himself in his own mind and heart so maybe since his acting was not panning out in the desired way because his last few movies uh, well a lot of critical uh, uh, you know critical praises but uh, not exactly big money spinners in the box office so that may have uh, hit him. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. Not everyone takes rejection very well. You know, like Akshay Kumar had 15 or 16 flops in the 90s. In one of his interviews, he said that he was getting work because he had a very good work ethic. He will show up on time. He will do what is required. And his acting as if you, a lot of you all may have not seen Akshay Kumar's start of his career if you're very young. But I remember his first movie. He's not acted very well. If you see Saif Ali Khan's first ever movie, he's not acting well at all. Like nowhere even close to what a Rajkumar Rao or a Vicky Kaushal or an Ayushman Khurana can do even now. But look at them today. I think they are my two favorite Bollywood actors, Akshay and Saif. The kind of work they're doing, the kind of roles they're accepting to hell with the box office. But I enjoy them. So with Sushant, what happened was he uh, perhaps felt uh, deflated because of the lack of commercial success. Plus there was depression medication. And plus the, there must have been certain personal issues also that we don't know about. So how our relationship with stress in here has to change. As I said, it's not about conquering stress. It's about accepting it. Like I remember uh, a friend of mine in school used to do this really stupid thing, very stupid thing. He used to come in and hit you, hit you like this really hard randomly. Sports may hit. I'm, and I used and I used to tell him, Kya kar rahe, dude, that hurts. He used to say, It's supposed to hurt. That's why I did it. If it didn't hurt, why would I do it? So if stress doesn't feel stressful, what will feel stressful? It's supposed to come in your life to make you stronger. If you see it like that, that I accept stress. I accept stress as an inevitable part of my journey of life. But what I don't accept is my relationship with it, trying to push it away. Like it's some kind of uh, ghost. It's not a ghost. It's an in inevitability. You can turn stress into concern by becoming a smarter person, by becoming more resourceful, by finding the right connections, by growing a network, by working smart rather than just working hard. You can work for five hours also and be ten times more productive than someone in 17 hours. Because in those five hours, you may not check your phone even once. And you just do the task that is assigned to you. Either you have assigned it to yourself or your college has assigned it to you or your boss and organization has assigned it to you. As I said, your track record will haunt you, but it will also open doors for you. So don't be ashamed of your track record. You may have done some dumb things. We've all done dumb things. That's why when people say, yeah, Dr. Aman is an eminent personality. In my mind, I'm Aman. I'm Dr. Aman to you guys. I was born a few years before I worked my butt off. I got my PhD. I have an MBA as well. I worked hard for those things, but in my mind, I just talk to myself. If I'm ever talking to them, I'm Aman. 
अमन भाई तूने आज ये नहीं किया या आज तेरे को ये करना है दैट्स हाउ आई विल स्पीक टू माई सेल्फ सो हाउ यू स्पीक टू योर सेल्फ इज समथिंग यू नीड टू स्टार्ट ऑब्जर्विंग लिटल मोर क्लोजली आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग द वे सुशांत स्पोक टू हिमसेल्फ इन हिज माइंड माइट हैव बिन वेरी हार्श एंड दैट मे हैव कॉज द पेन एंड देन दैट पेन बिकेम टू मच फॉर हिम and it's so sad that we lost such a talented and wonderful actor like him i personally loved the detective byomkesh bakshi should they see romance ms dhoni chichore kaipoche i've seen all these movies and i've seen all of them in the theater and saw most of them while living in singapore so singapore ke maine dollars mein bhare hain maine ticket ke paise and i loved him as an actor and you know when an actor your age dies it it, it feels a bit like bap re but now i have also reached that age where people uh you know might uh, do extreme things it's unfortunate but none of us should pretend to be experts about his life because hey we didn't uh, meet him we do know him based on what we are picking up from the news i could be wrong i could be right i could be somewhere so these are some thoughts i thought i hope i have scratched the surface in answering your question uh, yes sir yes sir and so one more thing like like i like i said i used to adore him a lot so uh, uh no, he did it means yes. yes no it's okay uh, i think uh, we should stop here unfortunately the next resource person is waiting no problem so I hope we have not overstayed our you members. just finish uh, finish it off with your question no no sir we are just uh, overwhelming with the session so but are you stressed out are you stressed out <laughs> you're stressed out you're stressed out that we are overshooting don't worry i'll give a short and sweet answer uh to him <laughs> and then we'll we'll lock him up in a room somewhere so he can't ask any more questions i'm just joking i'm joking all right all right go ahead what was the question i'll answer it and then we'll end well, this so you answer you you answered most of the uh, means my question so the i, I asked like i i adored him a lot so uh, he did it so now whenever i heard listen to his songs and also again i keep thinking over it so could you share some tips to uh, like how can i just forget the stuff and then concentrate on the other stuff See the either you can mourn somebody's death or you can celebrate the fact that they were with us. You can celebrate their life. Like when my grandmother uh died, um uh, R- R- Rupali would know this because we are related. Uh I didn't feel sad because I knew she has lived till her mid 90s. I felt happy that wow, what an innings man. She's lived through all the great wars. She has seen so much of history, so much of technology has come in front of her not just the internet but the telephone lots of things came before her eyes so i celebrated her life so you see the attitude switch has to be from within of course taklif to hogi yaar taklif to hogi we've lost a young actor at the prime of his career it almost feels like a personal loss for a lot of us because when we see people on the screen uh, their stories become our emotional experiences we almost have an emotional stake in their success and their stories because we are a very filmy country we are very ddlj kuch kuch hota hai wala desh hai ye so definitely there is an emotional investment but understand that this is how life is life is sometimes unfair sometimes cruel sometimes unpredictable feels insurmountable but there is always a way out you may not have the solution today but you will have it tomorrow so i did share several tips resources company exercise music and i think on that note i don't want to eat into the other speaker's time so whoever wants to help me conclude this help me conclude this Thank you.